What I want to do in this video is talk a little bit about traditional traditional IRAs. And IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. Individual Retirement Retirement Account. And the focus on this video is the traditional IRA. You'll hear of other types of IRAs, especially Roth IRAs and SEP IRAs, but this is only on traditional. The gist of all of them is really uh, it's the government's way of encouraging you to save for your retirement, but they all have slightly different details. So I'm just going to focus on the traditional right now. So let's say we are in year 0. That's right now. Instead of year 0, let me write right now. And you have two options. You could put you could take advantage of the traditional IRA. So this is the IRA scenario. And this is the no IRA. No IRA scenario. Now, an IRA allows you to put up to a certain amount of your income aside. Now, depending on your age and what year it is, that amount will change, but in 2010, that number is $5,000, $5,000 if you're under the age of 50. For under 50, and it's $6,000. This is for an individual, not for a family. And it's $6,000, $6,000 if you're over the age over the age of 50. Over age of 50. I guess the rationale was probably, gee, if you're over the age of 50, you better save even more for your retirement, which might only be 10 or 15 years away. So they give a little bit more leeway for over the age of 50. So let's say we take, we're under the age of 50, and we take full advantage of this IRA. So we set aside $5,000. $5,000. Here we set aside nothing. Set aside nothing. Now, in the very short term, the advantage is, is that this $5,000 of our income will not be taxed. So let's say that let's say that my tax bracket, let's say I'm in a 32% tax bracket. 32% tax bracket. Let me write that on the side cuz it'll apply to both scenarios. 32% tax bracket today. Cuz I'm making some good money tax bracket today. So if I on the $5,000 only, I'm only talking about the taxes on the $5,000. You're going to have to pay taxes above and beyond that on the rest of your income. But today, I'm going to pay zero taxes on that $5,000. So zero taxes on the $5,000. Now, if I don't set aside that $5,000 into an IRA, then I will have to pay taxes on that $5,000. So I'm going to have to pay. 5,000 5, times 32%, which is equal to what? That is, I'll just get the calculator out. So you get 5,000 times 0.32 is equal to $1,600 in taxes. So I'm going to pay $1,600 in taxes in taxes today. So in the year that I actually made that $5,000. Now, I can't set aside $5,000 if I made less than $5,000. It's always the lower of your income or these IRA limits. And of course, you're going to pay, even in this situation, let's say you made $100,000. When you put the $5,000 aside, you're still going to have to pay taxes on $95,000. In this situation, where you didn't put the $5,000 aside, you're going to have to pay taxes on $100,000. So you're going to have to pay taxes on the extra $5,000 which is $1600. Now, let's say let's go over let's say in either situation with that $5000, you want to buy and sell some some securities or some investments. So let's say right after you put it in the IRA account. So now everything is sitting in our IRA account. All of our transactions are sitting in this special 
IRA account right here, where we can actually buy and sell investments and trade them, but we can't cash them in and turn them into cash and then spend it on a new car or something like that. So, and if we did do that, before the age of 59 and a half, we'd have to pay a penalty. So let me write that down. You might immediately say, hey, gee, this is a good deal. Why, would, why do, doesn't everyone always do it? Well, the answer is, is if I pull it out, before 59 and a half, I pay a penalty. Let me write this down, because that's important to keep in mind. Pay penalty, penalty and taxes, and taxes if withdrawn, if withdrawn before 59 and a half. And once again, this is what this is the traditional IRA, the Roth IRA, for example, is a little bit more flexible on the the actual principal amount that you put into the account. But we're just dealing with the traditional. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. This is kind of the trade-off that you're giving. So the government's saying, hey, I'm giving you an incentive to put this aside, and I really want to make sure that you leave this aside until you already retire. You don't get tempted when you know when you see a nice sports car to cash in your IRA and use it because you're going to have to pay. A penalty, but as long as you don't actually withdraw it and turn it into cash, you can actually buy and sell securities within that IRA. So let's say, as soon as you put that five thousand dollars, you buy five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars of stock of stock A. Here we don't have five thousand dollars anymore. We only have thirty-four hundred dollars of our original amount. So we buy thirty-four hundred dollars. $3,400 of stock A. And let's say, I don't know, 10 years in the future. So let's say in 10 years, 10 years, that's going to be in either situation, in 10 years, let's say that stock A has doubled. So in 10 years, stock, and you sell it. So now you sell it, you have $10,000 here. You have $10,000 from sale of A. It's doubled. Here it's doubled, but you only had $3,400 of stock A. So now that $3,400 is worth $6,800. So you have $6,800 from sale of A. And let's say you want to put that into another stock. So let's say you put that all into stock B. And I'm painting a very rosy picture. You can't always ensure that stocks will double. And then so you buy $10,000 in this situation, $10,000 of B. And and well, I'll, I'll hold off there. So you buy $10,000 of B. And here you might say, oh, I'm going to buy $6,800 of B. But because you are not operating within an IRA account, you are, you're going to have to pay taxes on the capital gains from this right here. So capital gains are gains made from capital investments. In this case, the capital investment is investing in stocks. And since you owned your stock for more than one year, you at least will only have to pay long-term capital gains, which tends to be small, lower than short-term capital gains. So in this situation, you made $3,400 profit. 3400 I wrote 340000 You made $3,400 profit. You're going to have to pay 15% capital gains times 15%. Times 15%. Let's get the calculator out again. So 3,400 times 0.15. It's $510. So you're going to have to pay $510. So this is $510. So you take your 6,800, pay $510 to the IRS. You are going to be left with, you're going to be left with 60, what is that, 62, $6,290. Remember, this, the reason why you have to pay taxes is this is not operating inside of an IRA. Here you are operating inside of an IRA, so you don't have to pay taxes. Now let's say you invest in stock B, and then over the next 10 years, stock B also doubles. So stock, so this is 10 years, so stock B is now worth $20,000, and you sell it from sale from sale of B. And once again, it's sitting inside of your IRA, so you don't have to pay any capital gains on it. Now, in this situation, you use that $6,290 to also invest in stock B. And after 10 years, 10 years, stock B doubles. 
So it is now, what is that, $12,580. But once again, it's sitting outside of your IRA. You have to pay 15% capital gains. You had a 6,290 gain, $6,290 gain times 15%. Let's see what that is. Let's get the calculator. Where's my calculator? There it is. So you have 6,290 times 15% is equal to 943. And let me take that from my 12,580. 12,580 minus 943.5 is equal to, so I have $11,636. So I now have eleven thousand eleven thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars. And let's say twenty years have passed. We are now over the age of fifty nine and a half. We can now withdraw from our IRA. Now, of course, this situation, this is cash that we have. We can do anything with it. Maybe we're now over sixty years old. This could be used for our retirement for our everyday expenses. Now, this money that was sitting in an IRA, now that we're over the age of sixty. We're over 60 now, or over 59 and a half, if you want to be particular. Now that we're over 60, we can withdraw the IRA without paying any penalty, but we will have to pay taxes. So we will have to. So let's, we're going to withdraw, withdraw, no penalties, but we we will have to pay taxes. But the huge advantage here is once we're over 60, we're probably earning less money. So the actual tax bracket that we're in is probably going to be lower. So let's say we're in a 25% tax bracket. Remember when we first made that five that five thousand dollars, we were in a 32% tax bracket because we were you know this this young gun at the peak of his or her career making a lot of money. Now we're, we're making less money. We're trying to live off of our savings. So we have to pay 25% income tax on it. So if we pay 25% on $20,000, remember, now we're actually withdrawing it. We're actually putting it into our checking account so we could spend it for, for a living or whatever we want to do with it. So 25% of $20,000 is equal to $5,000 in taxes. So we will be left with, we will be left with $15,000 $15, to do anything that we want with it. Now, compare this. This is $15,000 versus $11,636. And everything we did was completely identical except for over here we took the 500 the sorry, the $5,000 and invested within an IRA. Here we took the $5,000, we had to pay taxes on it. Then we invested it in the exact same way. We actually made very good stock investments in both situations, and we ended up with a significant less amount of money. I mean, this is a, you know, 15,000 versus 11,000. That's almost a what is that? Like a 30 something percent difference in the total amount of money he has. And not only that, but this tax we had to pay, this tax we had to pay, we had we don't have to pay this. This is only a situation where you have a 25% tax rate. When you're retired, you might even have a lower tax rate than that, and it's deferred a good bit. But the real thing to think about is just 20 years in the future, you're sitting on $15,000 versus if you didn't participate in an IRA, you're sitting on only a little over $11,500. And of course, the main trade-off here is, is that in the IRA situation, you really couldn't touch your money. So if you had an emergency and you had to withdraw the money, you would have had to pay penalties on it.